Yes, I'm an optimist. I believe that I can overcome the world because of Christ. I'm not afraid of all the sins and the evils and the lust and the temptations around me. I can walk straight in the midst of this world. It doesn't mean that I get out of the world. I have to live every day in the world. And those temptations are there. But I have a power to say no. So do you have a power to say no. The same power that's available to all of us in Jesus Christ. And many of the people that are your heroes and many of the people that you think are at the top are really in their hearts at the bottom. Searching. They don't find it in all this popularity. They don't find it in all the adulation. They don't find it in all the popularity. They don't find it in money. They don't find it in some other philosophy, but they can find it in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus said, a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. There's something deeper in your life that you need that materialism cannot satisfy. Money cannot satisfy. Pleasure cannot satisfy. And one of the things that you need is the forgiveness of sin because all of us have sinned against God. And the word sin means lawbreaker. You are a breaker of the laws of God, and so am I. And the Bible says that you have, if you have broken in one point, you have broken all of God's laws. So we are breakers of all of God's laws, and there is a penalty for breaking the law of God, and that penalty is death and destruction and judgment in hell. That's the penalty. And we're all under sentence. We're like Damocles sitting under that naked sword. We're already under condemnation. We're not going to be condemned when we die. We're condemned now. We're already under condemnation. And Jesus came to save us from that condemnation and from the penalty of that sin. You see, man is trapped by sin. We're in a trap. Very much like a rat that's been captured in a trap. God can forgive you because of the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus Christ died for our sins. And because he was willing to die, God can now forgive you and remain just. You see, God had a problem. How could God forgive the sinner and remain just and holy and righteous? Because if God had come along and patted us on the back and said, you are forgiven, he would have been a liar. And if God had been a liar, he would have not been God. Somebody had to pay the penalty. You and I are guilty. Who's going to pay the penalty? Jesus paid it. That's the reason he came. We sing that song, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. That's the reason the word blood is used in scripture because the word blood stands for life. He gave his life for us on the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And it's wonderful to know that all your sins are covered by the blood of Christ. But you see, God in Christ came down and became a man. He became handicapped in a man's body. The mighty God of heaven went into a man's body, as it were. And just like us, only without sin, and finally died on the cross, and when he died, he became guilty of our sins. He'd never told a lie. He'd never committed adultery. He'd never had lust. He'd never been jealous. And yet he became guilty of all of it because he had your sins on him. And when they put the spikes in his hands and the spear in his side and the blood gushed forth and he suffered and the angels of heaven came, were ready to come to rescue him, he said, no, forgive them. I, they know not what they do. And he's saying tonight, I'll forgive you if you'll come to me in repentance and faith. In 1 Peter, Peter says in the 18th verse of the first chapter, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. We were redeemed not with silver and gold, and all the gold in the world can't save your soul. You can give all your money to charity. You can give all your money to the church, but that won't save you. You can work all you, the rest of your life in good works, but that won't save you. You can join every church in town, but that won't save you. 
You must repent of your sins and receive Christ by faith. For by grace are ye saved, through faith in that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You can't work your way. It's grace, and the word grace means unmerited favor, something you don't deserve. God gives it to you as a gift, something you can't buy, you can't work for. It's a gift, and God offers you the gift, but you have to reach out and receive it. And the Bible teaches that this world system is dominated by evil. Satanic cosmic principles of force and greed and selfishness and ambition and pleasure seem to be in control most of the time. And the world system is very powerful. It is often outwardly religious and scientific and cultured and elegant. But underneath is seething with rivalries and ambitions and lust and hate and greed and jealousies. That's the world. And Jesus said that world will not like you because you're following me. It hated me, it'll hate you. And often this world of evil is upheld in a time of crisis only by armed force. I don't mean everybody in the world is evil. I'm talking about the sins of the world, the evils of the world dominated by the devil. But Jesus met the world with all of its evil. He met the devil. He met the flesh, which means the evil principle within us. And he conquered. He conquered death which is the last great enemy of mankind. And by the cross, we are crucified to the world. In other words, because Jesus died on the cross, the world system with all of its power has been crucified as far as we are concerned. It has no longer power over us. Sin shall no longer dominate us. Sin no longer reigns over us. We may fail in sin. But the moment we do, we'll be convicted by the Holy Spirit and we get up and confess our sins and He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But Christ has disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public example of them triumphing over them, the Bible says. Our authority over the world is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have authority, I have power. So do you, an ordinary believer over the evils of the world. And so let the temptations come. Let the devil try to get you off track. And you have a power there with you. That's the reason we try to get you into the scriptures and get you studying the word of God and memorizing scripture. Because when Jesus met the devil, he didn't argue with the devil. He didn't debate the devil. He quoted scripture. He said, it is written three times and three times the devil was defeated. The tempter is going to come. But you have a power in the Word of God and you have a power in the Holy Spirit living within to help you as you meet the temptations and troubles and trials of this world. Yes, Jesus Christ is coming back again. He's going to set up His kingdom and He's going to reign forever and ever and ever and the kingdom of God is going to triumph. No ideology existing today is going to last. None. Only Christ will last as King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will come back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be punished with everlasting destruction. But when he, come, he, when he comes, he shall be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed. In that day, you'll find that little phrase used everywhere that day in that day in that day the last days or the day it's used all the way through that is the day of his return I go to bed every night with the hope that Christ is coming no this world is not going to blow up in some great atomic war the human race is not going to be totally destroyed God has other plans he has a plan that Christ is going to be on the throne and Christ is going to rule and evil will be destroyed. The devil will be cast into hell and the demons will be cast into hell. There is going to be universal joy. There is going to be universal peace. There is going to be universal justice. And the 
scripture says that you and I have to make a choice. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Elijah said, why halt you between two opinions? Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. Jesus said, enter in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go therein. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He said in that seventh chapter of Matthew that there are two gates. He said there are two trees. He likened life to a tree. One produces good fruit and one a bad fruit. You are like a tree. He said there are two foundations. One is built upon the sand and when the wind comes, it blows away and the other is built upon the rock and it lasts. Which is yours? You must choose. No. 